Number 34. The isotope thallium-208 undergoes beta decay with a half-life of 3.1 minutes. How long will it take for 99.0% of the sample of that thallium-208 to decay? Okay, so we're talking about radioactive decay, right? We have a radioactive isotope, we have thallium, and it undergoes beta decay. So that right there tells us that we're dealing with radioactive material. Now, just know that any type of radioactive material, now I don't care what element they give you. If they give you thallium, sure. They want to give you uranium, sure. They give you carbon, sure. You have one atom, radioactive decay. This always abides by first order kinetics. There's no exception. So, they could have given you any isotope, and you're going to be doing your first-order kinetic equations. Now, generally, with this nuclear chemistry chapter, they like to give you new formulas, but I don't think that's necessary. We already learned in our first-order kinetic uh, chapter that there's two first-order equation formulas. Why can't we just use those? That's what I say. It's easier to just memorize two formulas for two chapters instead of memorizing more formulas when you could just use these as radioactive decay, which is what I like to use. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the question is asking for how long will it take? Now, if they're asking for how long will something take, they're asking for a time value. So that means that I don't know what T is. Now, there's two formulas for first order kinetics. There's one with the T half and then just a regular T. Which time are they looking for? Well, specifically, if you have a T half, that's the half-life. And they already gave us that information. They said that the half-life was 3.1 minutes. So we're looking for a general time. So if we're looking for that just lowercase t, I know that I have to use this formula. And I'm solving for this time value, which we'll classify as x. Now, the thing is, is that we always have to have a initial amount, which is represented by this A0. There's brackets around here, which means that generally you use concentrations. Do you have to use concentrations? Absolutely not. Usually you'll use either concentrations or percents. So percents are totally fine here. And then, so we have an initial amount. And then we have a final amount. As I as I sense a sneeze coming, hold it in, Christina. <laughs> Ooh. Hold it in, hold it in. Hold it in, you gotta do a video. <laughs> Alright, it's gone. But anyway, we have a final amount, and we have an initial amount. Now, they're talking about percents, so what is always the total percentage that we're gonna start with? If we have a total percentage of a sample, we always have, yeah, you got it, 100%. So we know that this value is going to be 100. But now let's see what this value is. Now when we're dealing with this formula, it's always the final amount that's remaining, that's left over. So you started off with 100%, maybe now you're down to 60% of the sample that's remaining. Or maybe you're down to 40% of the sample that's remaining. Final amount, this needs to be a S right here, that's remaining. Now it says, how long will it take for 99.0 of the sample to decay? If 99.0% has left the building, if 99% if of it decayed, I don't care about how much decayed, I want to find out how much is remaining of the sample. So if 99.0% has decayed, how much is remaining? Yeah, only 1% because, and maybe I'll just put the decimal here, 1.0% one because if you have 99 decay, 1 left, that's the total of 100%. So I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put 99% here, I'm going to put 1%. And just know that if you use percent values, you don't even have to put these, these units in here. You just put the number. Okay. So we have 1 for the final. We have 100 for the initial. 
we're solving for that time, that means that we need to find out the rate constant. Or maybe they told us the rate constant, but I'm looking back and they don't tell me anything. But I know that I have another formula that also has the k in it. Ah, and this formula talks about that t half, the half-life. So I can use this formula first to find out that k and then bloop, plop that k right in there. So let's go for it. So I'm just going to take this off. Maybe what we'll do, scoop it a scoo. Let's see. Maybe we'll pull this off to the side for now because we're working with this. So they told us that we have a half-life. That's this guy. They told us that we had 3.1 minutes. So now all we got to do is just solve for k. So 3.1 equals the 0 0.693 divided by k. You can cross multiply and solve. So we got 3.1k equals 0 0.693. We're going to divide by 3.1 on both sides. Bada bing, bada boom. 0 0.693 divided by 3.1. And that looks good to me. And we get a K value equal to 0 0.2235. Now, since this was in minutes, the, the half-life, this is going to be minutes minus 1, or per minute. So now I know that my rate constant is 0 0.2235. All right, we have everything now to solve for, not that, but we're solving for the time. So let's see. Maybe what I can do is we're going to take this, we're going to pull it, we'll push it somewhere. Where, I don't really know. But maybe we can fit that beautifully in here. Oh, boy. So, Christina, what are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Guys, send help. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. Okay. So, let's plug everything in now. So, we have LN. I'm just going to outline everything just so that we have the slots. Okay, so we have ln of 1% equals negative 0 0.2235 times the t value, so I guess we'll just call it x, and then plus the ln of 100. Now, if you want to put 100.0, it doesn't really matter. If you want to just put 1, that's fine with me as well. So now... Can we just scooch this up? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're just going to simplify. Okay, so I'm going to do ln of 1. So ln of 1. Ooh, ln of 1 is 0. Okay. So equals negative... Uh, 0 0.2235 times x, and now I'm going to do the plus ln of 100. So let's see, ln of 100 is this value, so plus 4.6052. We want to solve for that time, so I'm going to subtract 4.6052 on both sides, 4.6052, that gets rid of this, and we get negative 4.6052, yeah, equals negative 0.2235x, divide by that on both sides, And then we have our x value, and that's going to be the time it takes. So this gets canceled. Goodbye. x equals, so this number, 
I can just divide by the positive value, so 0.2235. But if you wanted to make this zero, uh, sorry, if you want to make this negative, divide by the negative 0.2235, it's the same exact thing. And there we go, 20, whoop, 20 point, and maybe we'll say six. And now just look for the unit. The unit was in minutes for the half-life, so this is going to be minutes. So it's going to take roughly about 20.6 minutes to basically decay 99% of the time. And that kind of makes sense. Your half-life is only 3 minutes. So every 3.1 minutes, your sample is breaking in half. And then 3.1 minutes again, it breaks in another half, and another half, and another half. And then 20 minutes has gone by, and you're 99% decayed. You only got 1% left. And that's the answer here. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much. And we opened up memberships on the channel if you guys wanted to be a member to the channel to help us out a little bit more. Much appreciated, but not obligated. We have four tiers, tons of perks. So check it out if you want to. I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.